Yo, yes now, bless now people. Don't forget the rest now. I'm going to do a little review today. Let me sort something out here. So, I've listened to uh, From Under the Cork Tree, yeah? Fallout Boy. Um, which I believe is the second record. Yeah. Um, I listened to the debut and I really enjoyed it. And it made me think, you know what? I'm going to have to check out more Fallout Boy. Because it's epic. So, sorry, people. I really should have arranged this from the get go, but I hope you enjoy the experience whilst I'm here. I want to put I want to put me in them little uh, tinglings. There we go. That'll that that'll do, where people. That'll do. That'll do. So I listen to the record from start to finish. It's a lot more mature than the Fallout Boy I remembered on the last record, but. Um, when I listen to the debut record, which I've forgotten the name of at this point, people, so I apologise, but I'm going to listen back to that and then do a review on that record, and I'll have a good, uh, um, a good second album to be able to relate it to. Initially, listening to Fall Out Boy, I could pay attention from the get-go why they got picked up, and that they were fantastic at what they did, because it was an incredibly mature, in its own right, well-developed, Progressive in a sense that the songwriting, whether it be structure, instrumentally, vocally, lyrically, had definitely had a lot of time to grow and learn. You know, uh, the writing was great, the melodic hooks were great, the uh, tempo was great, and it did everything it needed to do with four chords, right? Now, this record from Under the Cork Tree, personally, for me, I think it's a record that grows on you, at least for me. I grew up during the whole scene kid emo thing. That was that was like a huge part of my development into music as well as into subculture. So I couldn't avoid Fallout Boy. I had friends and people around me. You'd be on MSN Messenger, yeah, Fallout Boy, Fallout Boy in regards to listening we're listening to fallout boy we listen to fallout boy and i'd see these song titles um i know two of the singles uh by default i know sugar we're going down and i know dance dance i don't know where i came across that dance dance tune i just think going through life i've come across it through numerous means but uh, sugar we're going down i think i downloaded it as a single for like what 79 pence, 69 pence on iTunes library back in the day. That used to be one of my forms of getting it before LimeWire. Uh, so I downloaded it onto my iPod. And it was good. Good tune to this day. It's still a good tune. And then I think I heard it on the Tony Hawk soundtrack. But I think it was another band covering Fallout Boy. I don't think it was the original song. Am I right in saying that? So uh, I was aware of them two tunes coming into it. Um, my favourite track on the record was what I... I was listening to the limited tour edition, by the way, which included a demo and two remixes at the end. Uh, so I assumed there was 15 tunes on this record originally. If so, the very the very last song was my favourite. It's incredible that we came across the last song being the best one, in my opinion, because that doesn't tend to be the case for the most part. The music or the misery. I thought it was a great hook. Like the rest of the songs, it was well structured, but the hook, the melody, and the way that chorus really popped, the vocal performance and the harmonies and so forth, I was very pleased by that. I'm pleased that we don't have as many harsh vocals on this record as what we did on the first, uh, so they must have removed that with purpose, because it sort of detracted from the melodic value, and it, it was just a bit, just a bit too in your face, right? Um... A blessing and a curse on this particular playlist. I thought I'd get a playlist up which is going to be legitimate. So I got the official Fallout Boy playlist on. Unfortunately, that meant the singles were music videos. And, you know, we're here to listen to the music. So I had to watch a few music videos. Uh, the music videos were really second to none. At least the first two. The third one was a little bit budget in comparison. I mean, the first two um, music videos were like real film, videographer, scripted, um, 
you know, Hollywood magic in a sense. The second music video, the one for Sugar We're Going Down Swinging in particular, um, I thought it was the soundtrack to a film, given the quality and aesthetic of that music video. It was absolutely brilliant. That was my favourite of them all. Um, the third single and the third music video, which was... Um, uh, a little less 16 candles. I thought that was rubbish. Terrible. I hated it. I hated it. I skipped half of it. I didn't. I'm here to listen to the music and I feel it detracts from Fallout Boy and gives more of an egotistical pleasure to the videographers and the media aspect of things. I, I'm not listening to the record to, to see impressive music videos. I'm here to, watch, to listen to the music. So I didn't like that video. I thought it was long winded. I don't have the attention span to just sit through that. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't Michael Jackson, was it? So. Uh, I wasn't too fussed about that. Uh, I made a couple of comments in regards to the uh, song titles. I, I'm not a fan of these long novelty song titles. Uh, I think they're excessive. I think they're boring. And I just don't think they're very good. But in hindsight, when I had a thought about it the other day, because I brought this album into two separate listens and I had a day off in between, right? It was, you know, a reoccurring theme for a lot of the bands during that time to do that, especially like in the uh, scene, kid pop, metal, core, emo space. Um, so it wasn't only Fallout Boy that was doing this sort of stuff. So I, I guess it was just a sign of the time more so than this band going out of their way to do so. But from a songwriting perspective, it was a bit like shooting yourself in the foot as singles, for dance, dance. And then, sugar, we're going down. Nice and simple. It relates to the chorus section. We know what we're getting from the get-go. When a song's entitled, I've got a bad alley. And I've got a dark alley and a bad idea that says you should shut your mouth. Brackets, summer song. And songs entitled, um, you know. I mean, where do we go? They're all, they're all ridiculously long. Get busy living or get busy dying. Brackets. Do your part to save the scene and stop going to shows. You know, I just think that that's a horrible novelty. I don't like that. I'd rather just get to the point and tell me what to expect in the song. You know what I mean? It's very important. It's like a piece of artwork, isn't it? And if you're just blagging my head from the get-go, I'm going to think, well, that doesn't relate to me emotionally or, you know, um, psychologically in any way. I'm not, not bothered about that random jumble of words. But, you know, it did work for Fallout Boy. And there are a couple of quirky and, like, actually quite good uh, inventive titles. So I'm not going to detract that from them. It just was what it was. Sound-wise, the production is on point. It feels to me that they've slowed things down a lot from the first record. Um, I didn't consider this a pop-punk pop record for the most part. Uh, it seemed to me just like more of a emo-adjacent rock band at this stage. Um, because... There wasn't much punk involved uh, whatsoever, whether that be in attitude, tempo, uh, vocally, uh, just, you know, soulfully. There wasn't there wasn't a great big dish of punk rock in there whatsoever. So uh, they definitely uh, wound down the energy, uh, not so much in a bad way, but just in a, uh, you know, it's a little bit heavier. It weighs a little bit heavier as a whole listening to the record. Uh, lyrically, we've got a few good lines. Me, personally, I'm not too fussed about the... You know, I like things packaged nice and clean and simple. Uh, it just works easier with my head, and that's the reason why pop music does it full stop. It's just easy listening. A little more room for thought. It seems like we sort of go on a train of thought in the mind of Patrick Stump or whomever was writing the lyrical content back then. Uh, when we go from start to finish, you know, it moves onwards and onwards but we do get some fantastic lines from that there was a couple of moments where i was really uh really pleased by some of the one-liners he gave us and that's about it in regards to my uh, listening experience not much of this is going to stay with me um but it is interesting to delve into this in a way larger than life band i mean fallout boy have been going strong ever since i've known them and they really did have an incredible force behind them back in the day when you know i was a young nipper and i was hanging around with other people and we were dying our air and we were stretching our ears and we were listening to brutal music or soft emo music or anything in between you know but extreme brutal metal music uh so yeah i'll, I'll give a shout out to fall boy uh, fall out boy for sort of uh, being present during that time and helping drive the way uh in regards to that particular community i'm gonna rate the record 
a 6 out of 10. I think it's a record that will grow on me personally. It's not hit me straight away. But I can't deny the sound and effort that's been invested into the record. And that's it. Plain and simple. I'm signing out. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to have a look at the Wikipedia and uh, look into the history of Fallout Boy next. All right. Peace.